It's that time of the season already. Red Bull have scored two 1 2 finishes, and it looks like they are going to be the dominant team again. The outcry for FIA to intervene has started because Red Bull is looking way too strong. Toto Wolf said that he won't do what that other team principal did and in doing so basically hinted that the fans and the media should do it. They say that Red Bull did this numerous times when Mercedes was dominant. When they give examples they always say that the 2021 floor regulations and DAS being banned were specifically targeted to hurt Mercedes. I already debunked the floor reg conspiracy and now it's time to debunk the DAS myth. I'm Wimbo, here's 3 seconds to leave a like. What is DAS? DAS stands for Dual Axis Steering and it was an ingenious moving steering system that the Mercedes F1 team introduced during day 2 of testing in 2020. DAS allowed the drivers to change the way the wheels were aligned on track. This is called TOW. TOW has an impact on several segments, mostly on tire temperature the stability of the car and the way the car handles in corners. This helped the tires to warm up more evenly which had a benefit on longer straights. It made them go longer on their tires because the tire degradation was less. The driver pushed or pulled on a steering column and it changed the toe from for instance toe in to toe out depending on which part of the track they were. So the already dominant team Mercedes found a gimmick that made them even stronger. This didn't go down well with the competition. Now imagine if Adrian Newey found a way to create an active suspension that was legal thanks to a loophole that made the Red Bull cars even quicker. That would be some people's biggest nightmare and they have only been dominant for two years. Well, Mercedes had an extra advantage in 2020 after dominating since 2014. Was DAS legal? The Mercedes development team did go through the process with the FIA to make sure everything was legal. A huge sum of money was spent on the tech and it made the W11 one of the most dominant cars in the history of F1. Red Bull was quick to protest the system. The Austrian based outfit demanded FIA to clarify the legality of the system. The protest was based on a breach of a technical article based on aerodynamic influence and an article that states no adjustment may be made to any suspension system while the car is in motion. Mercedes started with a victory straight away because the stewards rejected the protest. The conclusion was that DAS was not a part of the steering system and therefore wasn't part of the suspension. Now here's a question. If F1 and FIA were hellbound on crushing Mercedes dominance as Mercedes fans like to claim, why wasn't the system forbidden straight away? It influenced the 2020 championship as Mercedes won a whopping 13 out of 17 races. Hamilton and Bottas won most of them, then there were two outliers. Pierre Gasly won in Italy and Checo Perez won in Sakir. And then there was of course Max Verstappen saving the season from utter dominance by beating the W11 in Austria and Abu Dhabi. I'd say Max Verstappen in a not so dominant car gave us the entertainment that we're currently missing, don't you think? Why was DAS banned? For the 2021 season the DAS system was banned and Mercedes didn't replace it with another version of the clever trick. James Allison, the team sporting director at the time, said the following about it just before the start of the 2021 season. 2021 also sadly means that we say goodbye to an old friend from 2020, which was the DAS system. Which is a shame for us, because that was a useful thing on our car. It brought us good performance in many tracks last year. And so it's with a little bit of sadness that we say goodbye to it. But that's the rules, and we go into 2021 with a conventional steering system like everybody else. Team boss and co-owner Total Wolf said this about it. It was a good tool that helped us warm up the tires. But it wasn't a key element as it was often mentioned. We're going to have to compensate for that in some other way. We just have to do our job no matter what the rules are. As you can tell by the reactions of two very important people at Mercedes that they weren't offended or felt that the FIA was targeting them. Both of them acknowledged that there were valid reasons for the sport to not go forward with the technology. We need to take in consideration what state the world was in during the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a lot of uncertainty as to when the ground effect regulations would start. It was originally planned for 2021, but postponed. It was believed that it may take as long as 2023 before the new rules were implemented. 
if this hadn't happened, the teams would have started working on their own versions of that. The FIA allowed the system for 2020 and later added a clause for 2021 banning it. One reason was the unsettled state the sport was in and another big reason was the cost involved. The sport was moving towards the cost cap era and the goal was to make the sport more sustainable for smaller teams. Small entities like Haas and Williams were struggling to stay afloat as it was and a very complex and expensive technology would have set them back even more. This makes total sense to me. It had nothing to do with trying to stop Mercedes from winning. That this situation was used as an example is beyond me. It is typically something that especially Mercedes fans seem to do. Every decision by F1 or FIA is twisted to suit the narrative that they are the victim. I think Toto Wolff and Lewis Hamilton have always stimulated this by saying things in the media. When it gets repeated enough, it becomes the truth even for professional media people. I'm just glad I have the platform to bust these myths. Red Bull 2024 and 2025. I understand that if you watch F1 only to see who wins, it's not very exciting. Every race has tons of other narratives that are great to follow. But a fight for one point is less appealing than a fight for the win. I understand that. I'm getting to a stage where I'm actively hoping that Ferrari has a super upgrade or Alonso in the Aston Martin has a special Monaco setup to beat Verstappen. I'm not really rooting for Mercedes because they have had plenty to celebrate from 2014 to 2020. It's easy to point at Red Bull and blame them for dominating, but every team would do the same. You can point at the regulations failing, but I believe things couldn't be more fair. Nobody is outspending the rest, no more fancy gimmicks to go even faster like party modes, just a very restrictive set of rules and the best team with the best driver wins. I think that if FIA would implement something to slow Red Bull down, the opposite would be accomplished. We've already seen that with TD39. Total Wolf pushed for that regulation and made Red Bull quicker and Ferrari slower. So if the rule makers make up something new, Red Bull will ace that too and the rest will be further behind. All we can do is make the best out of these weekends and even enjoy these times in Formula One. I'm calling on you, the fans and my colleagues in the content creation business to not be too negative about the sport. I believe that if we keep reminding the people of how boring it is and how the sport is in danger, it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. More new fans will walk away and for the long term, that's not what we want. So enjoy every little narrative that is out there and do it with great enthusiasm. That way we'll have a cracker season again before you know it. If you made it this far, be so kind as to subscribe. Take care now. Doei doei.